Okay, uh, getting back to Elohim. Okay, and the Lord God. Again, I'm giving credit back to the Jonathan Cleck channel on YouTube. Very informative. For those that don't know who he is, um, he shows all the uh, different false flags that happened on our money uh, with the folds on the $20 bill, on the 50 on the 100 on the 10 He breaks that all down. Um, he is just a wealth of information. I have learned so much from the Jonathan Cleck channel. So I would urge you to go over there. Check him out. He's got a lot of good information. Uh, a lot of God-given information. And this is just one of the things that I have learned from him. Um, anyway, getting back to this. Okay, we looked at the Lord God and realized that when it says Lord God, we are talking about the self-existent or eternal God. We are talking about our God. Um, when we look up Elo, when we look up God in Genesis one, it is just the word God by Himself. And in this particular instance, instance, and not necessarily everywhere else in the Bible. It is number 430, and we're talking about Elohim here. So we're looking at two different creations. And the one thing that I do want to draw your attention back to, just briefly here, is that when we were reading this whole Edgar Casey thing, there was a part in there where it talked about the angels, uh, about these beings wanting to see what it was like to have flesh bodies, okay? And so there are little parts to his whole thing there that just fit right in with everything else. I mean, he was not used as a source for this, but it's funny that there's another source in the know. He's a Freemason. They know a lot of stuff that they don't want you knowing. And um, it's just interesting that that little thing would slip out there in his writings or that he would even put that out there. Uh, probably because people like you and I that are Christians would never go reading Edgar Cayce's books and his findings. Therefore, this is secret knowledge. They keep this to themselves. Trust me, there are a lot of people that know this, okay? But it has been hidden from your eyes, okay? Um, it has been hidden because we've been systematically dumbed down. Mankind as a whole has been dumbed down. But there have always been those that are in the know. And those that are in the know do not want us knowing all this information, which is the importance of bringing this information to you. You need to know. You need to have basic answers to life um, answered. I mean, basic questions of life answered. There are some things that if you go to the church and you ask them, they're going to tell you, I don't know. I don't know. And you know what? They're right. They don't know. Why don't they know? Because these pastors that go through seminary are also being systematically dumbed down. Okay? They are having seeds of doubt planted in their heads. And then when it comes to some really deep truths, um, they're never going to learn that in seminary. That is being hidden from them. And if it does come out, it's only used to contradict things that they know okay just to plant those seeds of doubt so I'm just I'm laying that out there you know if your pastor isn't teaching you nothing um, and you feel he's a very sincere man that is why that's what the seminaries have done to people anyway getting back to Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 I want to draw your attention to something in Genesis 1 and this is something that's been promoted by the church that is false very false okay false I want you to look at verse 26 this is gonna blow your mind verse 26 and God said now remember we're talking about Elohim all right we're not talking about Jehovah we are talking about Elohim here and God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> okay. What is wrong with this picture? There is a lot wrong with this picture. And I got to tell you, 
even before I found Jonathan Clegg, I gotta tell you, this verse bugged me. It bugged me to no end. In fact, there was a point when my husband and I were gonna sit down and we were gonna go through all these scriptures together at home, just ourselves, and study together instead of just studying apart. And when we kept getting, when we got to this part, I just, this just bugged me. This just had bugged me to no end. Because I knew there was something wrong here. I couldn't, you know, really put my finger on it. I just wanted to know who us was, you know. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where God refers to himself as an us. Or even Jesus refers to himself as an us. Okay, I, I can't find it. If you can find it, go ahead, drop it in here. Let me know. Um, put it in an email. But here... It says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, we're going to look up a few words here. First of all, we already know that God, in this particular verse, means Elohim, plural. Okay, it means the angels, the angelic host. Okay, but look at the word image. Look at the word image. I'm going to tell you what the word image means in this particular verse. Because when... when I'm going to show you something. I'm going to compare this to something else that we've already read. Image means from an unused root word. This is uh, Salem with a T. Salem. Okay? From an unused root meaning to shade. A phantom. That is figuratively illusion. A resemblance, henceforth a representative figure, especially an idol. Image and vain show. You really honestly believe that God created man as a phantom? You know what a phantom is, right? The ghost? Uh, not the God that created me. An illusion? I'm not an illusion, are you? Uh, I don't think I'm an illusion. Okay. Especially an idol. God isn't creating idols. He told us not to create idols. And our God never changes. An image or a vain show. A vain show. Like, look at me. Okay. Let's go back. And Elohim said, let us. Starting to make a little more sense. Let us make man, Adam, Adam, in our image, after our likeness. And let them, Adam, have dominion over the fish. Okay? Alright. I'm trying to show you something here. Now, is this something that was ordained of God to do? I mean, everything else looked good. And it was good, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. It kept saying that, right? After every day of creation, you know, it says, and it was good, and it was good. And verse 27, so Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he him. Let's go to Genesis 2. I don't see God consulting with anybody else when it comes to the creation of man. I'm sorry. Now, let us go to where God creates Adam. Adam. Adam just means man. Okay? That's what the word Adam means. Man. Okay. And I'm about ready to send you into another shocker. Okay. Verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay? So who is in the image of God? Who's in the image of God? Let us go back to Colossians again. Colossians 1, 14 through 17. We're going to go to verse 15, actually. 
We're talking about Jesus Christ. Who? Capital. Who? Who is the image of the invisible God? Jesus Christ is the image of God. That's who. That is who is the image of the invisible God. Jesus Christ could be seen. When he came to earth as a man, he could be seen as a man. He was the express image of the invisible God. Okay? That's who's in the image of God. Go back into Genesis. But what we see here in Genesis 1.26 is that the Elohim took it upon themselves to create a form of man in their image and after their likeness. Okay? They put that here. And we're going to call that a pre-Adamite. Yes, there were pre-Adamic men between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. There were millions of years of history. And there was a judgment pronounced on this earth. And there was a form of man already created that went under judgment and became extinct. Okay? We don't know what this form of man was. We don't know because if they were Bigfoot and we have sightings today and I don't believe that everything like that is false, I believe they're interdimensional. That's why you can't find proof of them and yet there is a woman that even on YouTube has some on film from a distance. I'm telling you there are some very strange things going on here but when God created man he created him of the dust of the earth. God was God is not of the dust of the earth. He did not create man in his identical image, in his image. He created man to be a he created a living soul within man and the only thing that could be referred back to us being in the image of God is through the Holy Spirit being in us because that is God's Spirit in us. Okay? So now we have two different creations. They're in two different chronologies. They were created two different ways. They had two different reasons for being. Okay? And we can see that between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 and um, I'm sure by now I've raised a lot more questions than you might have even had before. But I'm going to say that man of the dust of the ground and the Lord God breathed the breath of life into him. He had something that the Genesis 1 man did not have. He was given a soul. Okay? And that soul defines us in our personality, our emotion, all these senses that we have is is from the living God creating Adam. Now, something changed after the creation of Adam and Eve. We aren't even in the likeness that Adam and Eve were created in. And I'm going to get into that as we go further through the Bible. And I'm going to show you some things that will be very shocking. Um, also, um, I'm going to save that for the next DVD. Anyway, we're going to move on from here into the next part. I don't know, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to show you a chart or if we are going to go right into Genesis 3, but I'm going to figure that out in the next few minutes. Be blessed.